Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go ahead and continue to manipulate or just use and study the CSV files when using them as spreadsheets. So again, we have this list right inside here. What we want to do is basically go ahead and add like another, another number. So we're going to add another column and another number. I'm going to say it's like a um, an identification. Okay. So it would be like an identification number. We could have used date of birth, but that's a little harder. It's more complicated. So I'm just going to do the basics in, in terms of understanding it. Okay. So we already have our file right here. Um, we're going to create a list out of it like we did in the last video itself. Now we want to, with this list, by the way, let's just print the list. Uh, here we go. Um, here we go. So on the end of every list, we're going to add something on top of it. So that's going to be a for loop, right? We're going to loop all the way through. So what I'm going to say is for um, row so the type is list, right? So I'm going to call it row because it is every list is a new row, right? three, four, five, and, and down the line. Row in CSV. So always a, just a refresher, remember, whenever you do var, row, or list, row in CSV, um, this loops through every object within there itself. So it's going to be Remember, this is a, an iterable, so it goes through each list, this list, this list, this list, from there on. Okay, so then we're going to say row dot, oh, actually, I need a counting file. What I'm going to say is, a counting file is, I'm going to say, int um, id equals 1,000. I'm going to row dot add ID this is the list is going to be dynamic so I can add text as well as an, an uh, a string excuse me as well as an integer I could have done dot to string if, if I wanted to and I'm gonna say I don't think it's necessary um, ID equals ID plus like 100 so it's not 1,001, 1,002, it's 1,100, 1,200, something like that. So it makes it look a little fancier, okay? And then let's go ahead and then, oh, let's, let's still print the CSV. See what it looks like? Oh, nicer, okay? So that looks good. Now, once we have this, let's go ahead and convert it back to the file, right? Because this file is not touched yet. So let's go ahead and send it back to this file. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we have a list, right? So it's CSV is a list. We're going to have to change it back to a CSV, list to CSV. I just made that. That's part of the CSV library still. List to CSV. I'm going to send the CSV file here, list to convert. It's going to create the object C, which is a new list to converter. Then I'm going to say the string created equals C.convert, the list to convert right here, as well as field delimiter. Again, this we're going to create a string that looks in the form of a CSV. And I'm going to have it say, um, the field delimiter is a comma. The standard is comma. So I think that if we just left it alone, um, it wouldn't have really been a problem. But I just put that in there because it's nice to just see that. Okay. And then I'm going to return the string. And so the string new CSV equals list to CSV CSV. How could I have done this manually? Well, list to CSV. I could have done another loop, and I could have said for every, um, I created the list to the string, but every element inside of there afterwards, I would put, so list, it would be something like the list, let's say the list name is called row. It would have been row. You would loop through, so it would be like an I or something like that. Um, I, 
and then you would have something like something like this comma space and you would have done that for all of the ones and just loop through all of these um, lists themselves so list here it would be this comma row two row, uh, row i so it would be row zero one two three comma then here it would be slash r slash n I hope that makes sense. If that's completely not clear and you really want to know how to do it manually without the help of lists, um, the list CSV convert um, library itself, again, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. I can always just type it out, but just for speed's sake, I'm just going to leave it alone for right now because I, I, I don't think, I think we have enough knowledge that we can do it on our own, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then once I get this new string in that form, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, print it right here, save CSV to file. So save CSV to file, and that's going to be new CSV. And it's going to save it to the same file right here, which we, is the same one we've been using the whole time. Um, so I just created this function, data to save, right? Right here, the data to save, which is the new string that I just created. So I got a list. A CSV file, I created it into a list, change the list, change it back to a string, and now I'm going to start saving it back to this file right here, and that's what it's going to do right there. My file, CSV file, write to string sync, data to save. Okay? Let's see if that works. Okay, so that's what we got here, and what do we have here? So it adds it on top of it. So there's a new column right there. There's not a space here. Notice that? I could not get there, there to be a space there. I'm sure that if I did this manually, I could get that. I'm not exactly sure why. I think, because if you notice here, you do have a space. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I think there's actually some metadata that's saved. So it saves it. So it says, look like this if you've created the list one way. But if you've created the, the, the list another way, it's going to look like this. I think that's the only explanation I can actually come up with. Um, maybe that's actually not true. Now, I'm not exactly sure, but but it doesn't look perfectly. So I'm, I'm going to, for simplicity's sake, leave it alone because I'm going to have to pull out a few more hairs to figure that one out because I couldn't figure it out in a very timely fashion so far. So that's what we had. Now, in um, w with this, we wanted to do a few more things then, right? So what we wanted to actually do is we could go ahead and um, make a new column and add like six to this column. So add six to this column add a new column so this would be 1006 this would be 1106 and so forth so let's let's try that so what would we do well we'd loop through the whole thing all over again right so let's go um for let's do the same thing list row in csv but only this time csv right now has 100 added on to it right um Actually, so this is CSV file, list to CSV, so we don't actually want to do this any longer, right? Because the file we have right here already has that. So we're just going to get the file. CSV should now have those, the identification numbers, these being the identification numbers. <laughs> All right, so we don't need, so we would just say so for a row in CSV, every row inside of there, and we're going to say, Um, C, no, row dot add, um, I'm going to say row three, uh, this is going to get a little complicated, okay? So this basically is a string, even though it looks like it, it's not, okay? So I'm going to say, at least I think it's a string. It is. Int no string. Um int uh adder equals that's not an adder. It's column three. Equals int dot parse row three. 
So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, third column. It's actually the fourth column, but it's 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 a position number three. So I'm going to say int dot parse this. I'm going to say call three equals. I'm going to say call three plus six. We're just going to add it to it, and I'm going to say row three. Call three dot two string. I'm going to change it to a string because when we change it back here, this the list. I think we're going to run into some problems right inside of here. So we're going to try to keep it as straightforward as possible. We'll add make that a string right there. So that should add. Turn this into a, a number. Add on top of there six and then add additional column, and let's give that a shot. Uh, of course, there's a type error. I'm not sure where the type error actually is. Int column three. Um, maybe this is... Let's see if... I, I think this is a string on the CSV. Assert... Um, row three uh, is string. I think row three is a string. Um, no, it's actually not a string. Is it an integer? It might be an integer. Huh. Okay, well, let's take that out. If that's the case. In that case, um, int call three equals row three plus six. Okay, so let's just do that. So it's a... Well, I don't even need to do this in that case. Maybe I don't need to do that. Let's try this. <clears throat> uh, and maybe I needed to do that. Hang on a second. Okay. That's still getting assertion. Oh, no, wait a minute. Gotta delete that. Whoops. All right, let's see what that did. I just ran it, and there we go. So it does add every, a six onto everything right on top of there. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how we could continue manipulating these numbers themselves. Um, you know, in... His video in Sendex, which I'm using, I'm kind of using him as a guide. I'm not copying, okay? So just don't want the copyright people on top of my case. Um, uh, just as a guide, I don't see that there was a last line issue right on top of here. So um, I guess I can't really address that concern that he had on his video. Um, but that's okay. Let's just keep moving on from there, and we'll go from there, okay? Thanks a lot.